All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back, and it's time to book our first show. If you remember last time, we had just gotten to that point, and then we, uh, I tried to like do some like shady stuff against USPW, and it backfired on me. And it actually, I didn't show this the last time, but it did hit our prestige. We had an 82 prestige, and now we're 79 prestige, so we got to build that back up. So let's get started with this first show. When you go into a show, you have you know this first screen, and a lot of times you'll have a backstage incident to deal with at the beginning of the show. So let's deal with it. Oh, we got two. There has been an incident involving Joey Morgan and Enforcer Roberts. Joey Morgan was brought before the wrestler's court, accused of moaning about stuff all the time and bumming everybody else out. The judge, Enforcer Roberts, found him guilty and sentenced him to shut up or cheer up and to buy drinks for everyone after the show. Joey Morgan has the mercenality personality and his current normal morale. And it had a small positive effect on Joey. Cool. Mikey Lau came to you backstage and said that he thinks Lenny Brown has a bright future and he'd be willing to put him over in order to help him take him to the next level. This offer is good for three matches and will expire in two months. So that's like the kind of promises thing that I talked about, I think, last episode where I showed you guys that. So now this will show up in that screen and Mikey Lau says, hey, I'll put over Lenny Brown. I think he's going to be dope. So next we need to pick where our first show is going to be. Um, the wrestling industry is not doing well. In New England. But I always like running my first show in our home territory. So we're going to pick the best option. And so Connecticut Symphony Hall is our first uh, venue. In real life, you'd probably have to plan this way in advance. But luckily, the game doesn't make you do that. You can pick it the night of. All right. Here is the booking screen. So I'm not going to like... I, I, I haven't decided how I'm going to do every show here. I might just show you how booking works the first time. And then we'll just go over the results. But I want to show you at least one time how it kind of works. So there's booking analysis. The booking analysis has every character we have, whether they're on the show or not. It tells you what when they were last used, what their morale is, heel, face, what their momentum, all that good stuff. And up here it tells you, hey, if you don't have any matches that are aimed at storytelling, you're going to be penalized. And I'm expected to advance at least two storylines, none are currently being furthered. So that's, you know, what we got to do first. Now, I have this handy notebook here where I have written down my plans for every storyline we have. Almost every storyline. So we're going to see what happens here. First, let's book the main event for tonight because that's important because that match has got to be good usually. So here we are at the screen. It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one match. We are going to book... I'm going to go I'm going to go by major star here cuz we have Scythe who is a major star despite his overness cuz he has white hot momentum. And then we're going to have Valiant who has very warm momentum and is a little more over. So we're going to save that. And so we got them here on the screen. We don't all this stuff is auto set usually and you don't need to put it in. So like the announcers are always going to be our default announcers, referee, road agent. And then you could set titles, but neither of these guys are champions. Um, I'm going to auto name it. I'm going to leave it 15 minutes. 15 is, if it's under 15 minutes, we can't, it, it's the, the match quality is capped at a certain point. And more than 15 minutes, these guys don't have the stamina to really do that a lot. So we're going to leave it at 15 minutes. And now we're going to go to the road agent notes, which is probably the most important part of booking a match. So I have Scythe going over here. Scythe's going to win. We're going to make this storytelling so I don't get that weird uh, penalty that they were telling me down there. We're going to do an open match. And what that means is basically everybody's going to get the same amount of offense. It's useful if you have a match of workers of different levels and want to give the impression they're evenly matched. So we're going to say it's an open match. And then finally, we're going to make it a decisive win. So basically that means um, Scythe clearly won and there's no restrictions on popularity changes in regard to winners and losers. And then the last thing we're going to do, we're not going to make it the end of the match, but we're going to have an interference where Valiant is going to be attacked by Rogue because they have they're in a feud right now and that's going to move that storyline along and also <laughs> I'm going to say advanced storyline to Fear the Reaper which is the Rocky Golden Reaper thing and I'll explain why in a minute here so we're going to book that segment that's our main event so we're going to do an angle after the main event which is fine it won't affect it but we're going to have Scythe and his new manager, uh, Joe Sexy, which thematically, that's not a great name for Joe Sexy. Maybe we'll change that. And Rocky Golden. And we're talk um, so basically you can have it to where they're reading from a script or not, or they're told what to say or not. Most of the time you want to make it a script. Some wrestlers will go, hey, I don't want to work with a script. And then you have to do it. But 
Um, either way, you don't want to do half like scripted and half not because it usually doesn't work. So Scythe is going to be rated on um, entertainment and same with Joe. And then Rocky's going to be rated on entertainment. I was going to do selling, but yeah, it's, it's not really, it doesn't really matter. So we're going to make this a major six or we'll make it, we'll make it a major success for Scythe and Joey and we'll make it a defeat for Rocky. And basically, we're going to call this Rocky Gets Beat Down, Bish. All right. We're going to make it about seven minutes. And we're going to book it. So that's going to go at the top or at the end of the show. So right now, there'll be the final match with Scythe and Valiant. Rocky comes out to try and stop him from beating down Valiant with Rogue some more. Rocky gets beaten down. I'm not going to include Rogue and Valiant in this angle because it just seems messy. And I didn't mention this, but this this match here is supposed to be like number one contender. Well, not number one contender. Basically, at the next pay-per-view, there will be a four-way for the championship. It'll be Rocky versus Scythe versus two other people who haven't won their matches yet. They're, they're going to fight next week. So we got uh, Des Davids defending his North American title against Lenny Brown. The guy that everybody wants to put over, apparently. And we're like, hey, we're putting this title on the line. Des Davids is going to win. I don't want Skull to be managing Lenny just yet. That's going to like come into play after this match. Because I, uh, you know, you, you, you'll get it. Des Davids is going to win. We're going to call it an open match because actually he's a little less... Uh, over than David's is. And then we'll say it's a decisive win. Book the segment. There. Match number two. Done. Okay. So now we're going to have an angle where Hollywood, Mr. Hollywood, Brett Starr, is going to call out an open, he's going to call it an open challenge and Marshall Dillon is going to answer. And we're going to say that's moving along the storyline, even though we don't have Joey Morgan involved yet. So basically my plan is, um, Hollywood is going to continue to call people out every week, beat them in a match, and then he's finally going to get his comeuppance from someone who's a little more on his level in Joey Morgan. Hollywood wins. Okay, a more of an undercard match that's going to move forward our tag team feud, um, while not being a tag team match, is going to be the High Flying Hawaiian over Monte Trescarde. Trescard. Trescarde. Monte Trescarde. And high flying Hawaiian, high flying Hawaiian, high high flying Hawaiian, high flying Hawaiian is gonna go over here. We like him, and we do not like Monte Triscard. So we'll book that, and then we'll maybe do. Uh, let's let's give them time to talk. Even though these get the guys involved in this feud aren't really the best. Um, Paul Huntington's got good mic skills, but the rest of these guys aren't really there yet. So let's script everybody. And we'll give a uh, minor success to these guys because they're the bad guys. Minor defeat. But because um, High Flying Hawaiian is going to get the win in the match. So this is, book this is before the match. Okay. Um, up next, we have our angle of... Um, Brandon Big Money Big Money James versus Mikey Lau, the uh, Kung Fu expert. And actually, we're going to have uh, BJ get the best of Mikey here. Um, we're going to say it's a success. No, let's say it's a major success. And we'll say major defeat because actually Mikey is going to go over pretty big in their matches. So I want to give, I don't want to completely kill BJ's, uh, um, yeah, his, I don't want to kill his shit. Okay, so now we have one of my favorite things to do, which is uh, take our boy Mainstream Hernandez and our boy Spencer Spade and just have them trash on Jungle Lord off screen. Like, he's not even going to be on screen. And we're not going to... These are two of the guys that I'm not going to script because um, they can they can talk. They can, they, can, they can talk to talk and walk to walk. And, uh, yeah... That when I've done this in the past, it's been pretty entertaining shit. We'll see what happens here. I like doing like the angle match, angle match, angle match. Sometimes you do two angles in a row, but 
Sometimes you don't. Okay, so I got a hundred. I got twenty-five minutes left to book, at most. I haven't done anything with Remo and Rogue. Well, Rogue is in shows up in the main event here, but maybe it'd be nice to have like a valiant rogue moment where they maybe they jaw at each other a little bit no one's really six valiant doesn't like being scripted we'll just do that he's like oh good luck in your match against scythe later and he's like fuck you bro and they're like oh, fuck you okay so then we still got 15 minutes who haven't i used yet a lot of people I'm a little nervous about my match quality because I don't know if these matches are going to deliver. So I'm going to add just kind of a match that's going to hopefully get good ratings. And that's going to be ZWB versus the brothers, the twins, going against each other. And I want to make it a draw, but that's not going to be a good match, uh, match quality. We're going to say steal the show. We're going to call it an open match. We're going to call it a decisive win, and I'm actually going to leave it up to the road agent who wins. If you don't pick a winner, the road agent will decide for you. Um, you can rate stuff on Star Quality and Menace, which is their two highest stats, Menace for Scythe and Star Quality for Rocky. But the angles can't be more than, like, four minutes. Otherwise, the crowd will go, why are we just watching two guys, like, stand around and do nothing? I'm going to give them both major success because the idea – well, major success is kind of cheating. We'll do success because – they're both successful in, in what they do, and they didn't brawl, and no one won or, or lost. Sife's going to get the win later, but this this is kind of one of those these two guys who hate each other see each other backstage kind of angles. So that's, that's what we're going to put here. So now I have an hour of pre-show, and what I usually like to do is take our tag teams that aren't being used and throw them in a nice big tag team match. So we got Faith and Old Glory, the Awesomeness, the Pain Alliance, and then this is where I usually try to find a partner for uh, my boy Biggins. Where is he at? He's recognizable? Yeah. Brett Biggins. And let's team him with... Let's go Steven Parker to start. Because that would be a good win if they had good chemistry. And we're making a pre-show segment. Um, I don't really care who wins because the awesome, it's going to give the win to the awesome this probably. So not really worried about that. We'll hit book that. And then... We'll do another one-on-one. -on -one. Who do I got here that hasn't worked? We'll give the Crippler a match because he's uh, important. And we'll have him just kill American Machine. And we'll actually make it a shorter match. So it's like, yo, the Crippler really just destroyed him. Let's do another tag team match where I just throw random dudes in. Let's team up James, uh, Billy Bear and James Prudence versus... Robbie Retro. I don't have a lot of faces on my roster is a problem. Like everybody's here. And Oliver Cobb, I guess, because he's there. Maybe some of these guys will end up with a good chemistry. Maybe not. Because one of my owner goals is to build up my tag team scene. So let's give John Greed and this guy. This guy's probably not going to last long, but we're going to lower it two minutes so it fits. Boom. Okay. Now, I have post-show, but post-show to me is weird. I feel like it affects the show rating when it shouldn't. So I don't – I mean, it probably doesn't, but I just feel weird about, like, every once in a while, if I have a really popular person, I'll bring them out at the end of the – yeah, you know what? We'll do that. Let's do – we'll just bring out Jack Bruce and let him talk for, like, four minutes. Because that's the kind of thing that the crowd goes home happy, right? All right. So here we go. First show, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see how it goes. Okay, the terrible pre-show match. John Greed defeated Charger Saki with a crash diet. Performance of 59 and 44. So, yeah, they're not very over, so they're going to get lower uh, stuff. You can... Um, oh, I don't have the... If you want, I'll turn it on a different show, but basically you can have the dirt sheet, which tells you every reason why they got these uh, these uh, ratings. Next segment. Um, oh, that's good. Dwayne Fry and Anna Garcia have pretty good chemistry when calling matches together. That's not normal. That's that's pretty good luck. Neither None of these guys turned back any chemistry, which is fine. It's better than no chemistry. 
Um, Cripple and American Machine have good chemistry, but it was I tanked the rating by making it so short and having the Crippler just destroy him. So maybe I shouldn't do that next time. Oh my god, they put faith in Old Glory over... God dang it, that's the last time I trust a road agent. But as you can see, uh, Awesomeness have great chemistry, and they got Tag Team Specialist bonus, and they have that. That's, um, that's coded into the database when you start, so it's one of those starting chemistry things. All right, into the actual show. Um, that's not a great rating, but that's okay. Um, again, that wasn't a great match. What? He's really off his game. Okay. Okay, that's better. Okay. Oh, they have good chemistry when wrestling. That's good. Ooh, mainstream didn't do well without script for all. That's normally not the case. Normally he... Uh, having a hot catchphrase is one of those things that um, it's one of those attributes, the temporary attributes. And so I try to abuse that when mainstream, when we start the game, because he he will really boost segment ratings with that. Valiant Row got an 80. That's good. Yeah, we this might not be a successful show for us, boys and girls. Um, but it's a building. That's a problem. SWF, you, you're starting with building and you got to build it up. Yeah, see, I would have liked an 80 there, but they didn't really. Joe Sexy was underwhelming. Scythe invented a new catchphrase. Okay, well, that's positive. Okay. Yeah, see, so that wasn't a great show. 74, we lost popularity in 11 regions. We gained it in six regions. If I wouldn't have switched our show to a different time slot, we would have... Uh, our television company would have met us but it is a slow build it's it's not something you can just boom hey we're good you know we're ready like you got to build your guys up and that's what that's what we're intending to do so i'm sending out some signings of development and actually what i'm going to do because he rolled such a high destiny stat i'm going to send him to development and see if he gets any better he's going to tell me it's too small but i don't care okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to pre-book our pay-per-view you have to do it at least a week in advance which we're at eight days right now, so we got to do it now. Otherwise, they'll, I have it turned on that you'll receive, you'll get dinged for it. Um, so let's start pre-booking. I have this all written down. What's tricky is I haven't, like, revealed my full main event, but we're just going to do it anyway and pretend the fans don't know, um, which is kind of against the spirit of the whole thing, but uh, you guys are getting a little insight into what I'm doing here, and that's okay. So our main event is going to be a four-way for the, the heavyweight title. And it's going to be Rocky Golden versus Scythe versus Randy Unleashed versus ZWB. And uh, the reason for that is Scythe's not ready to beat Rocky outright. He's just not. So the bum foals are here to raise the match quality, but also take the, take the hit, take the loss. And it also will boost them up quite a bit, right? So... I can choose who loses this match. I'm going to have Randy Unleash lose it because he's the heel and Rocky Golden's the face. And it will move both their storylines, hopefully get a high grade, and uh, it will be great. Triple threat match between our, our secondary uh, big feud right now, Remo, Rogue, and Valiant. Triple threat match. I'm going to give Remo the victory because I think his popularity is most important to protect of the three. But um, really not a whole... I, I'm not super in love with this uh, storyline they start you with. And we'll be getting rid of it soon. But it's too quick to get rid of it right before the pay-per-view. Next we have... Uh, Big Money versus Mikey. Big Money Brandon James. Versus Mikey Lau. And we're actually giving BJ the win on this one. But that's probably the last time he's going to win in this feud. So, And it, it will say, hey, this show not only has enough star power to avoid penalties, but will actually gain a small boost, which is dope. That's what we want. So I think the other matches, I kind of want to not keep secret, but um, the storylines aren't finished yet. So like in the real world, it would be like, oh, uh, for example, Joey, Joey Morgan's going to fight Hollywood Brett Starr, but Joey Morgan hasn't like answered the call yet so it wouldn't make sense to book them oh uh, we could book we could book lenny versus uh dust davids which is a match we gave away on free tv just now but uh 
It's going to have a different twist to it. So Lenny's actually going to go over here, and we'll talk about that when we get to it. Because I'm run, uh, basically the storyline I'm going to run is that it's, yeah, it's not going to be a decisive win. It's going to be a tainted win. Um, titles still change hands with that. Because we're going to have Skull the Bones be Lenny's manager. And he's going to cheat for Lenny, but Lenny's not going to know it. That's the storyline I'm going with. And he's going to continue to do that. And then eventually the hope is they have... Skull will come back to wrestle and they'll have like a blow off feud kind of thing. I know it seems a little out of character for like the Undertaker type guy, but he he's not exactly Undertaker to me. So, all right. So let's uh, we got one more uh, TV before we have a go home TV before the pay per view. So let's get to it. That's Deadpool. That's literally Deadpool. Okay, so I got back my house show monitoring, and it shows Brett Biggins have neither good nor bad chemistry as tag team partners, and Bear, Billy Bear and Akuma neither have good nor bad chemistry as opponents. Because Joe Sexy as a name doesn't really fit as the manager of Scythe, so we're going to rename him um, to Joe Spooky. Right? Joe Spooky. That, that works, right? Uh, no, not an alter ego. He's just Joe Spooky now. <laughs> he can't play Mysterious or Occult. He can play Swagger. So he's like a... Spooky... No, he's a, he's a sexy shaman. Instead of being like all like... Or shaman, as some people say. Uh, instead of trying to be like... Oh, he's... He's so spooky. It's more like, oh, well, he's sexy, but he's also kind of spooky. So there we go. Joe Spooky. I feel better about that now. I hope you all do, too. All right. So tonight, Supreme TV. As you can see, I got some more roster members that are going to stay with us. Brian Vesey, who we talked about coming out of retirement. He's going to be pretty big for us. Chris Caulfield, again, pretty over. He's going to help us. Pablo Rodriguez, I don't know if I talked about before, but... Uh, 54 over, not nothing to sniff at. And then Fred Reek, 60 over, the former a former member of our uh, SWF roster. He's coming back home. Okay, so I'm hoping we're a little more successful this show. We're going to go to Canada for this next show because their wrestling industry is rising. And I want to go to Ontario because it's very large. And Ottawa, no stadium or anything, just Ottawa is what we picked. Okay? So, continuing our little... Uh, thing here we're gonna have two matches to determine the final two contenders in that match we have zwb versus the crippler okay it's a big deal um zwb is gonna go over storytelling you know the typical stuff and then um we're also going to advance two storylines with it because otherwise they wouldn't. So we're going to advance Bumful on Bumful action is what I've been calling it. And then the Fear of the Reaper because it's going to matter to the main event. So then we'll do it again. Randy. And Angry Gilmore. Getting his, getting his, he's got 75 over. He's pretty good. He's a baby face. But Randy is going to take this one because we want him to be in that main event. Uh, for the act, the main event, main event, boys, we're going to have an angle where Rocky Golden, not happy with what happened to him last week, finds Joe Spooky and beats the crap out of him. And Scythe isn't there to save his, 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 new, his new boy, his new mentor. Valiant's mad about last week, how he cost... Uh, Rogue cost him that number one contendership, or that 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 match. And um, but Rogue is actually going to win, and I'll tell you why. Because there's one other person uh, in this feud, and that is Mister Remo. And he's going to get he's going to attack Valiant in the match with the referee not seen, causing Rogue to win. Bada boom. 
And that actually is probably the main event because they're the more overstars. So we got three good matches. Hopefully they're good. Brandon James. Another brawl. This is the go-home show, so there's going to be a lot of brawling going on here. But this time, Jack Bruce is going to save Mikey, his manager, Jack Bruce. Um, and we're just going to have him be put over on Overness, and this is going to be a shorter angle. Our man Hollywood, Hollywood B BS, as I like to call him, Hollywood BS, it's a good name for him, is calling out another person, and this time it's going to be American Machine, which... <laughs> Wet fart, am I right? Uh, just an absolute wet fart. American Machine sucks, which is why Hollywood is going to destroy him. Yes, I'm giving way too much time to this storyline because now this is where Joey comes in to save the day and says, hey, I'll fight you tomorrow night at the pay-per-view. And he's like, I'm shaking in my bones. And he's like... Nah. Okay. So that's apparently our big storyline for the show for some reason. School of Bones taking Lenny Boy under his wing and saying, "Hey, I can be your your manger. I can be your I can be your your friend. I can be your your pal." Which is going to give him the edge against Des Davids, but little does he know it's not the edge he wants. Okay, so now we have a continuation of the tag team feud where this time the two other members are going to fight. And in the worst example of 50-50 booking ever, we're going to put Paul over Akuma because we had High Flying Hawaiian win the other one. 50-50 booking, gotta love it. Mainstream Spencer Spade teaming up on Jungle Lord. But this time Jungle Lord's actually going to be there. But he's still not really going to get in a word edgewise. He's just going to kind of... You know what? No, we'll give him a little love. He's going to come in and fight them. And we'll say uh, minor defeat, minor defeat, success for Jungle Lord there. So I got eight minutes of real showtime I could do something with. Scythe wasn't on the show at all. Who's a who's an unimportant person? Ooh, Charger Sayaki, is he... Is he the only unimportant person I have? Let's just feed Brett Biggins to him, I guess, huh? And so I only have eight minutes total, so it's got to be six-minute match. Scythe. Domination. And now let's get into tag teams. This time the Dallas Cowboys can be involved because... Uh, Marshall Dillon isn't going to lose another singles match early on. This time I'm going to give the win to the awesomeness because they didn't do that last time and I thought it just would. But apparently Mass Patriot and uh, Maddie, Maddie Faith are too good. Alright, who else we got left that needs some work? Let's have Brian Vesey. Actually, you know what? No, I want to I want to do a tag team because I want to find Vesey a partner. Like a young partner let's give Sayaki a chance even though he sucks and he's a heel but whatever John Greed and Primus Allen because that would be a good tag team too if they have good chemistry let's do this okay Pablo Rodriguez not having a great match score there but um his Priest of Pain gimmick, great. Dang, I saw the chemistry, and I was like, oh, I hope that that's Brian Vesey and Charger Saki, but it's not. Also, his gimmick got poor. That's not good. I guess I should have tweaked that before we started them. Okay. Wow, really good match for the pre-show. I guess the awesomeness are really good. And Masked Patriot. Ma masked? Masked Patriot has really good um, basic skills. Okay, so that's kind of what I expected out of that, but it got Scythe on the show. He's cool. Yeah. Wait. Oh, Joe Spooky. That's right. I got to change his gimmick. Oh, good. It got a great rating. Good. Joe Spooky will be more uh, useful now. 
See, this time Mainstream did a good job working without a script. So it's weird. Joe uh, Jungle Lord brought this down. <laughs> he just did. Which is why I normally have him off screen, but I wanted to give him a little little benefit of the doubt there. Um, Paul Huntington defeated Akuma. Cool. Okay, that's that's promising. Angle with Skull and Lenny went well. American Machine is a wet fart, but he had a good. Okay, are you telling me the one the Let's Play game file that I'm doing is going to be the one where American Machine is useful, guys? Because that's what it seems like. I mean, he only got a 50, but and then that did worse. I don't. Okay. All right. See, this is the kind of match rating I was looking for out of a bump hole here. And Gilmore's really good, too. That should have been higher. Again, great rating from those two. And then that's the match rating I'm looking for. This might, this show might have squeaked by. We might have been okay. We would have gained a popularity in an additional one region, but growth was restricted due to the audience size? Huh? I've never seen that in my life. Maybe it's because the wrestling uh, industry is so low there. Maybe that's a new thing, because I've never seen that before. Anyway, successful show. We didn't lose popularity anywhere unlike the previous time. So that's good. We're trending back upward. Okay, guys. We're going to end this episode here. In next episode, we will book our first pay-per-view when Hell Freezes is over. So uh, we'll see you then. Bye-bye.